Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's News Pulse. I'm Akivito and now the headlines. In a startling revelation, Nagaland has reported 54 Omicron cases, out of which 49 were of the BA.2 sublineage of the variant. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman presented a fourth straight union budget today. She presented the financial statements and tax proposals for the fiscal year 2022-2023. India registered a sharp decline in daily COVID-19 cases as 1,6759 new infections were recorded. Decline in the daily positivity rate to 11.69% from 15.77% on Monday. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman presented a fourth straight union budget today. Union Minister announced digital rupee to be introduced by RBI. RBI to issue digital rupee using blockchain technology in the fiscal year 2022-2023. And now the news in details. In some startling revelation, Nagaland has reported 54 Omicron cases out of which 49 were of the BA.2 sub-lineage of the variant. The cases were detected out of 152 samples that were sent for whole genome sequencing to the Institute of Bioresources and Sustainable Development, IMPHAL. Further, it was stated that the lineage of two samples could not be detected as yet. Out of the 152 samples, 49 samples were found to be Omicron BA.2.2, three cases in the BA.1.1 and two cases were detected as being Omicron BA.1. Among the samples that were sent, 17 samples tested positive for the various strains of the Delta variant, while 79 samples were rejected. Another new reported detail that the is that most of those of infected with the Omicron cases had no travel history, indicating community spread. Based on reports received, the BA.2 subvariant of the Omicron is inherently more contagious than the original BA.1 strain among both vaccinated and unvaccinated people. And now to talk more on this startling development, we've got with us on the phone line Dr. Vinod Sole Tina Khamo, who is also the State Nodal Officer of BSL Labs Research and Ethics. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us on this platform. Yeah, good All right. evening. Doctor, initially with the onset of Omicron, there were not many samples being sent for genome sequencing from Nagaland. But now, Doctor, on what basis were 152 samples sent for genome sequencing to Imphal? Well, you know that initially, later on, in the, after the pandemic, the cases had decreased. So yes. our positivity rate also went down so much. Yes. We didn't have much cases. Then suddenly the cases started increasing. That is how we could send our samples. All right. Because we are supposed to send only positive cases for genome yes. sequencing. We yes. cannot send the negative cases, right? All right. Yeah. All right. Doctor, out of the 152 samples sent for genome sequencing, 49 positive came for the Omicron BA.2, while 3 came for BA.1.1 and 2 cases were Omicron BA.1. How could a layman understand what all these are and can we call all the people with the different subvariants the same? Yeah, uh, so actually, if you look at uh, this, it is the, we have to understand that it is a classification of the virus. You know, when right. the mutation takes place, we have to classify it because the virus is really mutating. Okay, yes. so we have to watch every every variant. We don't know how it is going to behave. Okay. So we have to mention that the 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 virus which is mutating into a different form, yes. we have to classify it and mention it there. So we don't know how these people are suffering, whether they are in serious condition or whether they are. Okay, you know, this right. will help the doctors and the scientists to understand the virus. Okay. So that is the main thing. It's mainly for the scientists and the doctors to understand the variant. All right, ma'am. So would it be possible that uh, these three uh, in strains, the BA2.0, the BA1.1 and the BA1, yeah. could have the same symptoms or could have different symptoms? Uh, most of them are, uh, we cannot say some of them have uh, running nose, some of them have fever, some of them... So this is how we are classifying. Now we know two of them, 
Now we go back to our these people. What was their symptom? Okay. All right. So this is going to help us to understand how the symptoms are happening. All this right. will all tell us. Now we know that these two cases were BA1, yes. three cases were BA1.1. Yes. You know, so we know what were the symptoms. This is going to give information to the scientists to understand worldwide how they are behaving. We are now studying it just now. Okay. It's just happening. So we don't know how what's going to happen. All this right. is going to help us okay. when we classify it. All right. Doctor, yeah. initially only those samples that tested positive and had travel history, they, their samples were being sent for genome sequencing. But now with the fact that out of the 54 Omicron cases, majority did not have history, travel history. It has totally shifted the balance. So now, how will the state machinery adapt to that fact and what will be the government's next move in terms of more testings? So if you look at it, this Omicron is having a very high transmissibility, yes. you can see. So it is uh, transmitting so much, it's going very fast, much faster than the other, uh, the other variants. So it just has spread to the community level. It's even in a house, if somebody is positive, the whole family is getting affected now. Mm. So you can see that it is uh, very fast. So mainly it is prevention. We all should know the preventive ways how to prevent the spread of the virus. Mm. That's the only way. All right. Doctor, how long does it normally take for the genome sequencing results to be out? And would it have helped a bit if Nagaland also had a genome sequencing lab like Imphal? Would it have helped in detecting cases faster? Yeah, so anyway, to do this genome sequencing, it is a, a very big thing. Okay. Um, the machine is not a cheap thing, it is very expensive. Okay. And not only that, the running cost is, mm. is also very, very high. Okay. Okay? And right. not only that, the persons who are going to man has to be really well trained in this. You need qualified manpower to run the uh, sequencer. Okay. You have to be well trained in this. All right. Yeah. So, ma'am, is there any time period? Because uh, according to the reports, it was stated that uh, the samples were sent on 28 June, but it was received on 31. So, could we expect that the normal sequencing results take about 10 to 12 days? Yeah. It will actually. What happens is that here. Uh, we when quite the sample is uh, the the lab the time is period is long is because most of the samples are coming from the various districts. Okay, by the time it reaches us, then we have to extract the virus right. from our lab. Okay. After extracting the virus, that is the RNA. The RNA has to be sent to the place where genome sequencing is done. Okay. So. Uh, it's the uh, transporting time also it takes time bringing the and extracting the this thing then for the people to do the alignment of the whole sequencing so it takes around at least five to six days it should take and since it is outside our state it is taking a little bit longer because they also have to look into their own cases yes yeah all right, ma'am, uh, you, you had just mentioned the fact that the Omicron is now spreading in the community stage. It's reached at community stage. So do you think that Nagaland will also now have to start, or rather will have to increase its testing to detect more Omicron cases? Yes, yeah, so actually when you look at it, like in the, uh, the normal COVID uh, prevention, we have to do. We have to continue to wear our mask. We have to continue to keep our distance. We have to avoid crowds. We have to wash our hands. We have to go follow the same as COVID during the pan pandemic, okay? Right. This also has to be the same way. Mm -hmm. There is no difference in this. It is like a flu, you understand. When you go near anybody who's having a running nose or a flu, you will definitely get it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if we know how to prevent it, it will prevent the spread to the, mm -hmm. to your, to your, family members or to your community. You have to protect yourself from uh, this. All right. So this, uh, the steps have to be followed, the normal steps, which has been going on. Okay, doctor. Doctor, just uh, a, a question aside. Uh, can the health department and the frontline workers and also the people of the state expect a laboratory to be set up in the state anytime soon? And if it is actually set up, wouldn't it make the work of our health workers a little less strenuous? 
Doctor, it has been stated by the Director, National Center for Disease Control, Mukesh Kumar, that the Omicron is at the community stage of transmission. In case there is an outbreak in Nagaland too, like it happened in the second wave uh, with the Delta variant, is there in adequate manpower and facilities available in the state ready to handle it? I think during the pandemic also we have managed to really work so hard we handle. I think now we have learned our even the public are so aware. If the new uh, protocol that is wearing masks, washing our hands, and making a distance all the time. And I think if we don't do this, we can all work together. If everybody, the government and the public, work hand in hand, I'm sure we can uh, handle it. Why not? All right. Doctor, I mean, uh, the, we have known that the Omicron is four times more transmissible than the Delta variant, but not to cause any panic. Do you think that the public is, since uh, there is lower rates of hospitalization and the symptoms are not as severe as the Delta variant, do you think in one hand the Naga public is being a little too lax in this wave? And do you think uh, that we should be more proactive in fighting against the pandemic? Yes, we still have to be very careful because the virus is still mutating. We don't know what is going to mutate, whether this behavior is going to change, become more severe. So we have to keep our guard. We cannot let off our guard, whatever it is. We have to continue all and right. protecting and do all the preventive measures which have been said to us. And I think we have all learned our lessons. Doctor, the country and the state I mean, like every day we get reports of daily fatality rates and the deaths. So how is the government being able to identify if the cause of the death was COVID's Delta variant or Omicron variant? And is there any particular process being followed to ascertain the cause of death? Um, so if a person has died in the hospital yes. and then we know that the test has been done because we have all the reports of whoever has died yes. uh, because the, the test which the test has been done we know every sample which is positive are sent for genome sequencing so i think we, are, we, we can know whether they have died because of uh, delta or uh, or because of uh, omicron that we can know why not all right yeah. okay doctor the b1 B.1.1.529 or Omicron was detected and reported to WHO from South Africa on 24th November 2021. As time has passed, new sub variants have emerged, including BA.2, also known as the stealth sub variant. How should the public prepare for it and are the vaccines effective against it? Um, see, vaccine, uh, those people who have been vaccinated two times, also they are getting the getting infected okay yes but but what happens is that it is not causing severe disease in them okay those people who are infected so it is protecting you you are protected in many ways you know so that you don't get hospitalized you don't go into severe condition so people who have been vaccinated are are affected but they are much in a better position than those who were not vaccinated All right. Or, doctor, so it I mean, is very important that we are all vaccinated. Okay. Everybody should get vaccinated. And yes. it, it is very important to do this because it is going to protect you in many ways. All right. Doctor, I mean, like, nowadays, any new terms of any virus is really affecting our... The fear is really growing and the panic is really spread, spreading worldwide. And now we already heard about the Omicron and now there's something called the stealth Omicron. Doctor, could you explain a little more as to why it's called the stealth Omicron? No, see, uh, as I was telling you that most of these uh, uh, variants, as we were just talking about, yes. we have classified into them. Whoever is uh, discovering them wherever, whichever lab they are getting the to, first to detect it. So it is coming out. Now, what happened is that the third Omicron virus at the moment is the dominant, even in our state. Now we are, have to keep a watch on this and see whether these cases who got this variant, are they 
going into severity or are they uh, not that serious? No, we, we will come to know okay. later on with our data from other people's data because we are not the only one who is uh, reporting. Other people are also reporting and all, and all this report will be put, analyzed and it will come out very soon. Okay, doctor. Doctor, with the uh, inception or rather with the coming of new waves and uh, with more information that is being provided and that is being available in social media or whatever, uh, but then this now Omicron has finally been reported in Nagaland. So mm -hmm. do you think uh, just to not let it cause panic in the community, doctor, what would be your advice to stay safe? Yeah, so whatever it is right now, we also have Omicron. We have, this is also a warning sign to say that we are still not, you know, we think that we have become safe, we are not having any more COVID in our state. But it is not there. We are also at par with the other uh, countries, with other states also, where Omicron has been detected. It shows that we are very vulnerable also. Yes. So, in order for that, we need to keep our guard. We have to continue wearing masks, we have to wash our our yes. hands and we have to keep us maintain our social distancing and avoid crowds all right so doctor uh, is it is it foreseeable in the coming days that due to the detection of omicron and now that the omicron is in the transmission stage do you think that new sops are on the way i, I didn't get your question uh, now that omicron has been detected in nagaland and also yes. knowing the transmissibility factor of the Omicron. Do you think that new guidelines or SOPs from the government is ex expected in the coming few days? Um, I think it will be the same because okay. uh, it's the same, the way it's behaving is almost the same. So I think we have to, it should be the same. It, it's all over, everybody's behaving the same only. All right. It's maintaining, yeah. All right, doctor, I mean, when it comes to Omicron and Delta, I mean, like today, everyone is only talking about the Omicron and mm -hmm. uh, the transmissibility factor. But are we giving too much lax to the Delta variant? Because when it comes to severe symptoms and hospitalizations, it was the Delta variant that actually uh, proved to be a big uh, downfall and rather gave a lot of stress to the healthcare facilities. And even in Nagaland at present, we've got a lot of Delta variant. So are we, should we also be aware of the Delta variant? So definitely. Delta has got more severity. Yes. And then you see the hospitalization is much more also. So Delta has got more severity and we have to be very careful about Delta. All definitely. Right. All right, doctor. Uh, just a very personal question. How has the la past three years been for you, doctor? I mean, the pandemic came on the 2019 and it's been about three years since the pandemic. So, doctor, how has your battle against the coronavirus been? And is this a winning battle for us? Uh, <laughs> There's a long story to talk about. <laughs> and I think uh, we did so much. We don't know what was happening outside. I only know that we know what was inside the lab and how we were in our PPEs and we had to stay in hospital and give reports every day. No, nobody went home and we had to co code it and nobody could uh, be. We did not even take off. We were all working the yes. whole year. And in fact, only last year at the end, few months now, everybody managed to go home. Now we are coming from our home to the office. So we are a little bit more relaxed now. All right. So doctor, which was the most, uh, like, which was the most painful part for you in that three year journey? Was it the uh, severe symptoms or was it the isolation that you had to undergo? Um, no, I think uh, we did not have any, uh, we enjoy because we, I work with my research scientists yes. and uh, I should say I admire their stamina and the passion they had to do the work. And uh, we enjoyed because uh, we could, uh, we were at par with the other country and we did not that. And so that was the joy we could uh, serve our people All and right. our community. We were very happy to do that. All right. We could come out from our... Uh, from our lockdown and we could work. People were staying at home, but we were happy we could work. 
that was i think i would like to share that all right also now coming ma'am just another question which is really apart from the omicron ma'am there are words and there are reports around the world that there is an even more lethal infection called the neocov so would you ha happen to have any idea about it and is it really different from the omicron variant oh well that that is still uh, we wouldn't know much about it right now all right ma'am yeah yeah all right anyways doctor thank you so much for giving us your time on this platform and trying to explain to us what the repercussions of the 54 cases of omicron being detected in nagaland would be and also and also thank you so much for all your service and all your work for the nagas and thank you for keeping us safe thank you so much all right so th that was dr vinusole dr tina who is also the no state nodal officer at bsl labs and also she is the one handling the genome sequencing uh, test that all the samples that are sent from nagaland goes through her and she just explained that at the moment the scientists are trying to ascertain the different variants of the omicron and that's how the stealth uh, stealth variant stealth omicron all these terms are coming out and these variants are for the scientists to understand what these strains symptoms are and what effects do they produce and doctor has also stated that the fight is still not over and basic sops like washing hands maintaining social distancing and wearing of mask is very important and essential in the fight against the pandemic and she has also said it is nothing to panic about the state government is fully ready to handle it well now moving on to more news the budget has allocated funds for projects related to afghanistan the minister of external affairs will have 200 crore to spend on that country it will also dedicate 600 crore for myanmar which is currently reeling under civil war since the military coup of february 2021 bhutan as usual has received the highest allocation with 2266.24 crore noteworthy that india does not have a diplomatic presence in kabul where its embassy has remained shut since the taliban took over in august Afghanistan has been a steady recipient of India's grants over the last two decades and the government of President Ashraf Ghani last year received around 348 crore. India has showcased its assistance to Afghanistan as aid oriented which is focused on development projects on the ground. Over the last two months India has sent several consignments of medicine and humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. A large scale wheat consignment is expected to be delivered to Kabul in the coming weeks. The allocation is expected to be spent on similar assistance during the year the union finance minister nirmala sitaraman on tuesday announced the launch of the samart scheme to promote the use of biomass in coal fired thermal power plants a step that will curb stubble burning and air pollution HT on January 21st had reported that the policy mandating the use of biomass pellets for 5 to 7% of the requirement will be mentioned in the union budget. The scheme Samarth, which is also sustainable agrarian mission on use of agro residue in thermal power plants has already taken off in about 40 of the 180 coal fired power plants in the country. The policy was first notified in November 27 but in October last year the revised policy for biomass utilization for power generation through coal firing in coal based power plants was issued making it mandatory for all coal fired plants to use such pellets and increase the percentage of biomass to 7% from november this year union finance minister nirmala sitaraman announced the union budget 2022 at the parliament on february 1st while addressing the parliament she said 400 new generation vande bharat trains with better efficiency to be brought in during the next 3 years 100 pm gati shakti cargo terminals to be developed during next 3 years and implementation of innovative ways for building metro systems bharat 2000 km of network will be brought under kavach the indigenous world class technology for safety and capacity augmentation in 2022 23 new generation vande bharat trains will better energy efficiency and passenger riding experience will be developed and manufactured during the next 3 years 
100 pm gati shakti cargo terminals for multimodal logistics facilities will be developed during the next 3 years and that was all for this hours bulletin for more news and updates stay tuned to hornbill tv goodbye सुगंध रंग और रेस्ली झांस एवरीडे जुबा पे अपना स्वाद एवरीडे स्पाइसेस 100 परसेंट टेस्ट एवरीडे स्पाइसेस बेस्ट सुगंध रंग और असली झांस एवरीडे जुबा पे अपना स्वाद एवरीडे स्पाइसेस 100 परसेंट टेस्ट एवरीडे स्पाइसेस बेस्ट Ajikali laga bacha or adolescent kan traditional or nutun forms of digital media de bishi immersed hui jaise. To sal majo de moi kan dikhi pai ki digital media use to moi kan para interactions or social media karne chulai. Specially ajikali laga bacha kan para digital media easily access krobo pare. Evidence kan koi ase ki idu digital media exposure para bacha kan ge early learnings nutun ideas laga exposure, knowledge, 